Okay, getting started with AHP. Uh, we're going to make a fairly simple network here, and we're going to use this exercise as an attempt to do a couple things. Uh, one, we're going to learn how to use AHP. Two, in particular using the Super Decision application. Uh, two, uh, give us an opportunity to talk about some concepts within strategic management and how the AHP application may be applied to strategic management. And uh, three, talk a little bit about how to conduct an industry attractiveness assessment. And we'll compare this approach with an approach that we'll do later on in the semester. Okay, so assuming that you've been able to get the uh, Super Decision application to open up, it should look like this application that you see here. Uh, fairly um, common user interface and what we're going to do is start building our hierarchy. So we're going to go ahead and start designing it. The very first thing that we know we're going to need is a goal cluster. Your pop-up window will come up like this and we're just going to label this goal. And always a good idea to put a description in. So here the goal is to decide what businesses to be in. And remember, uh, we have read the Porter article, What is Strategy? And we know that strategy is about making trade-offs. And at the executive level, that's what you're doing, making trade-offs. In particular, we want to look at what industries um, that we think we want to be in. <coughs> we do want to um, do a few things to uh, make our model pretty so that we can see it in there. Let's change the color from white to something that we'll be able to see in the background and we'll just make it a light blue. You can make it any color you want, it doesn't matter. And then we're going to go ahead and save it. And there's our goal. Now the software application itself won't run um, if a cluster doesn't have at least one node in it. So we're going to go ahead and create a node in there. All I did was right click on the cluster and what I want to do is create a node in the cluster and then I get another pop-up window. And so I'm just going to call this one again, goal. And then we're going to save that. Now I have a goal, a, a goal node inside my goal cluster. Every model needs to have a goal, or I shouldn't say that. There are exceptions, of course. Most models will have a goal in it. It's a thing off of which you're going to build. Now, to in order to decide what industry we're going to want to be in, we're going to want to have uh, again, I'm going to hit my design, at least two clusters. So we'll click the new. There we are. And we get the pop-up window again. And here we're going to want to know what industry is, uh, the uh, attractiveness. And here it's um, the factors that um, uh, make an industry attractive. Okay, and we're going to create another one. And the other one is going to be competitive, or let's just label it one word, strengths. And here it's the um, factors, or uh, the, it, we'll call them factors again, the factors uh, for which our firm has a competitive strength. And then we're going to save that. So now we have our two clusters by which we're going to evaluate what businesses we're going to be in. So then we have to decide what kind of criteria um, will we evaluate the relative attractiveness of an industry. So within here, and this is really up to you, it, it will depend a lot on um, the industries that you're in, the uh, criteria against which your individual firm evaluates uh, any particular industry attractiveness. Um, so this is something that, that you and your team will need to have a conversation about. So here we're going to go ahead and create node and cluster, because now we know we need to have nodes and cluster. <laughs> And we might have things like market, let's just do uh, uh, size. And as a description, we'll put in here uh, market size in projected 
growth rate. And I'm just picking these um, out of my head. Uh, again, you may decide on something uh, com completely different. Uh, I'm just going to apply a color to this so that it has some color. And I'm going to create another one. Uh, and, and size makes sense because if, if an industry is um, declining, clearly it's not something you're going to want to be in. Um, if the projected growth rate is very low in that industry, it's not a place you're going to want to be. If it's high, that's where you're going to want to be. Let's put the comp, uh, competition. <clears throat> and here we want to say low competition. Competition is higher and high competition is lower. <clears throat> this is going to have to do with the way that we code it on the back end because we want an industry that has very low competition in it. Let's create another. And then we're going to want to have um, the emer let's say uh, op and threats. So here we'll define it as the, the um, emerging opportunities and threats as a net value. So here obviously we want um, there to be more emerging opportunities than we have threats. Let's create another. And uh, how about resources? In particular, uh, in particular, what we want is there to be a um, uh, the low resource requirement is better. High resource requirement gets a lower score. Right? The, the more resources we need for something, the less attractive it is. Uh, create another. How about um, cyclicality or seasonality? Right? So clearly what we would like is a uh, level um, uh, demand, level annual demand. Right? It allows us to forecast better um, where we have seasonality. Uh, then we make all of our money, say, in one quarter and um, not too much in the other three quarters. A, a level demand is more attractive than another. How about um, profitability? Right, Where the um, uh, overall industry in industry profitability. Right? So the average profitability in the industry is high. And let's just do one more. How about um, risk? Right? Where the industry risk is low is better. In industry risk low is better. There we go. And then we're going to save that. I'd say don't go over nine. Again, it has to do with span of control. If you have more than nine elements in a cluster, then you really ought to um, try to break it up into sub networks within this network and then create additional nodes underneath those sub networks. Nine is, is really about the most you want to go. Here we have um, what size, competition, opportunities, and threats, resources, seasonality, profitability. Oh, uh, let's just add one more that I think might be um, relevant here. Uh, I'm going to add a um, uh, social, let's just call it social. And what I mean here is the um, societal, political, regulatory, regulatory, and environmental factors. Okay, so we've got uh, roughly um, eight different uh, elements with uh, in ours. And um, uh, given the example I'm going to do, I do know that I'm going to want one more. And this one is going to be uh, uh, fit. And here, what in particular what I'm thinking about is the cross-industry 
strategic fit. In particular, what I'm going to do is a, um, a case with uh, Adidas, uh, just as an example, uh, because we know Adidas is in multiple business lines. Okay, so we've got the attractiveness and the goal set already. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause this here, and then we'll do the strengths in the next video.